Hey all, welcome to Parker's Reef. On today's episode, we're gonna check out this, the latest all-in-one reef tester from Kamola, the ReefMaster Spa. All right, guys, thank you for joining me on yet another episode of Parker's Reef. And as touched on in the intro, today we're gonna to check out this. I've managed to get my hands on a pre-production unit of the all-in-one reef automated tester from Kamoa that they have dubbed the Kamoa Reef Master Spa. Now, before we dive into the details of this device, I should take a step back and just explain what it is and why it would be of interest to you and your reef tank. Now, we are in an exciting time in the reef hobby at the moment. We are what I like to call the dawn of automation where every brand under the sun either has just released or is about to release their all-in-one smart tester. Now, we've got things like the Reef Factory Smart Tester, we've got the brand new Trident, we've got the uh, uh, Items of the Maven from uh, Coral View, nearly forgot the name there, and so, so many more. We've got the uh, Mastertronic Essentials coming from uh, the guys at Focustronic and more. There are just automated testers coming everywhere. So it is both an exciting, but also a slightly confusing time out there for those who are in the market looking to add some automated testing to their reef tank. So. Today, we're gonna to take a look at this Kamoa device, which does test out of the box seven parameters. Now, I'm almost gonna to have to read the list off the back, but we'll start off with the obvious ones. We've got KH, calcium and magnesium on the uh, big three element parameter side. We've also got iron, which I must admit I was not able to test, but you guys will be able to in the production versions. And then on the uh, nutrient side, there is nitrite, nitrate and phosphate. So all of your major parameters can be automatically tested with this device simply by setting it up, plugging in, setting a schedule of tests and you're off and running. So if this sounds all too good to be true, continue watching because we'll go over all of the details, both in uh, what you get in the box, how you go about setting it up, what the results are like, and then I'll go over all of the questions that you guys sent through to me that you wanted to ask about this device. Then we'll wrap things up with a little conclusion at the end where we can talk about whether it's suitable for you on your reef tank, or perhaps you should wait for one of the other slew of automated testers that are about to hit the market. All right, so the first question off the rank is what do you get in the box? Now, obviously you get the unit itself. This is a pretty uh, complex looking machine. When you open up this little side door here, you can see all of these little solenoid pinch valves and just a couple of pumps. And when you look on the back of the device, you can see all of these connections here that you've got to hook up. We'll go over setting that up in a second, but uh, apart from the device itself, you obviously get a power supply. Then you get these seven reagents here, starting with a KH, then onto a calcium and a magnesium. We get an A and a B for that, which is interesting. We roll on over to a uh, phosphate reagent A, phosphate B, nitrite, nitrate, A and C. I'm not quite sure why we missed the B, but we do. Then we get labeled hoses for each and every one of these parameters, which does have a label of both both ends, so it makes it easy hooking it onto the machine and also into the uh, bottles of reagents themselves. Here we've got a couple of uh, wastewater connections, a couple of salt water connections, and uh, even more of the uh, reagent hoses, a couple of uh, little suction cups to put the uh, water in your tank down underneath, and then these really nifty little bottle caps with uh, little hoses, which make it super easy to hook up those reagents and get it all as tidy as possible. All right, next up is how do we go about setting this thing up? So I figure we may as well take this device over to my dream room tank and we'll go about setting it up right now. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is jump on my phone and go to the Kamoa remote app. I've already got that because as you can see, I've got a number of devices. Now I'm gonna click on the plus in the top right hand corner and have a look at the devices that show up on screen. When I scroll through this list, hopefully we're gonna find the Kamoa Reef Master Spa. Seeing lots of things there and spa EN, I'm assuming that's for English, that will work. And there it is already connected via Bluetooth. Now I can select that device and it's gonna go through now to our Wi-Fi connection, which is obviously what we're gonna use. So I've selected my 2.4 gigahertz network here and I'm entering my password in. Now the device is using the Bluetooth connection to set up that Wi-Fi connection and will be set. So gonna give it a second to think this through and then hopefully we get a successful message. We do, great. So now that device should show up with all of my other Kamoa devices in my app here. And I can see we're ready to set up the ReefMaster Spa. So I'm gonna hit start and we're gonna follow the instructions on screen. Now take note of the time, we're 12.45 at the moment. You can see we've got a list of reagents here to confirm. Gonna select scan code and then we're gonna go with our camera into those bottles of reagent. Have a look for the QR code on there. 
please bear with me. I've got a, bit, a little bit of a shaky hand while I'm trying to do this on screen. Get that, uh, that QR code to focus. There we go. And that should find it. Hopefully, if the app's going to work for us, maybe you have to get a little bit closer. They are quite a small QR code, but we're in business. So we can see we've got the nitrite nitrate reagent A. Going to add my next bottle in. It's going to think for a second, and then we should be able to add our next one in. Yes, setting. Great. Now I can select the next one, and I'm going to scan that QR code, and you get the idea. We're going to go through each one of our reagent bottles. This time we've got the PO4 reagent B. Don't have to do these in any particular order. Because of that QR code, the app knows what it's looking for. The reagent knows what it is. Simple as that. So... Again, I'm just gonna tick through all of these. Don't have to uh, select carousel numbers. I don't have to select what type it is. I literally just go to the camera, scan the QR code, add and keep rolling. So the device is fairly simple here, keeping an eye on that timer now at 12.46. So we're about two minutes into the setup process here and you can see it's all going fairly straightforward. Hopefully I've got enough battery to keep, <laughs> keep recording on the screen, but we should be okay. Picking up each one of these bottles, it looks like I've found the right sort of distance from the bottles to the camera to get uh, to get that QR code to pick up. It took me a little bit the first time, just getting too close, wasn't focused. But uh, what I do find interesting is each one of these reagents, well, there's not to each one, but a number of these reagents are different sizes. So you can see the uh, calcium magnesium, there's 250 milliliters, when some of the others are much smaller. We go from uh, 50 mil, 25 mil, 100 mil. So it is an interesting little uh, assortment there, but uh, ticking through our reagents, I think maybe we've got one more to go. Let's have a look. Add the uh, KH reagent, which is a big one. There is only one reagent for KH, so that makes sense. And the app's gonna tell me, let's have a look. That is all. So there is a cleaner, which I don't have. And now it's telling me to go about and connect all those tubes, which uh, yeah, there's a little bit to do there. So let's uh, get stuck into it. Now, thankfully, due to the uh, bottle caps that already have holes in them, the little extension and the connector you get with those caps, and then the very nicely labeled lines for each one, you just have to go through and connect them all up to where they point to. So this one is PO4B. Going to have a look where that one is. Let's see, it's down here, PO4B. Simply push that onto that there, and that one's done. I would love it if they were a twist connector, but uh, in this instance, they are not. Next up, I've got uh, calcium magnesium B. That one is there. Simple as that, I'm gonna go through and connect all these up now. All right, now, despite trying to mix up my salt water and wastewater lines, which I've now fixed up, thankfully, again, due to these handy labels and obviously not connecting up the cleaner one or the iron reagent, I'm now good to go, so we'll jump back to the app. All right, now that all of our hoses are connected, I can proceed with clicking the fill button, which is gonna fill up each one of that spaghetti of lines out of the back of the unit. Now, you can see on screen there, it does say it will take some time and you don't have to leave the app open while this is happening. So you do get a status update there and we can see the salt water in one and two is filling up. I've left the app and come back five or 10 minutes later and it's almost finished, but it is still doing a little bit more. So I'm gonna step away from the app again. I'll give it plenty of time to get the job done. We go from 103 three now up to 115 and you can see we're almost there all lines are now fill in fact it does say all filling done so i can click that button that process did take a good 20 25 minutes which is totally fine because it didn't actually require any input whatsoever from me so once i'm set there i can click the all filling done button and then we're going to go through here where we set the thresholds for each one of the parameters which basically means what is your sweet spot for each one of these so for magnesium i'm going to change the uh, upper limit to 1500 the lower limit i'm going to change that now to uh, let's have a look we'll go to 1200 I'm assuming this has got to do with either uh, push notifications when you come out of that range, or if you wanted to hook it up and do some dosing or change your uh, calcium reactor settings, it'll do that based on these thresholds. But um, I don't 100% know at this point in time, but I'm just putting in some fairly uh, broad ranges for each one of these elements, as you can see. You probably wanna have a tighter window than three DKH for your uh, alkalinity, but uh, let's roll with that for now. As for uh, nitrates, I do like them a little bit higher. So I'm gonna say two's my low and 20's my high. All good with that. 
and we can just tick through each one of these as we go. P04, probably want to be a little bit higher than 0.02 is an upper limit. I'm going to go 0.02 as a lower, 0.15 as an upper. The days are, in my opinion, long gone of uh, Zio no nutrient reefing, but uh, now we're done. We've set our thresholds we can start to use. We're going to roll in and we can have a look at the dashboard now. And I get this firmware time error. I seem to get that with a lot of Kamoa products. It doesn't really seem to be a big issue. And now we can see the number of uh, reagents we have available to us, the number of tests left. It is giving me an indication that I possibly should use 24 hour time if I'm gonna use this app, but I'm gonna ignore that for now. We're gonna keep on rolling and have a look. You can see the huge number of tests I get there. Calcium and magnesium, 148 tests each. Let's see if we can kick a test off. I'm going to... Uh, have a look at the different options here. You can see I've got two different areas. I'm gonna select calcium magnesium at the top, press the test button, and uh, we're off and running with our very first test. Now, I'm curious to see how long that test takes. You can see we're 118 now, so it hasn't taken too long. And if I skip forward a little bit in time, you see five minutes later, the test is 11% in. What is super curious though, if we skip forward a little bit further in time, I can kick off a second test from that other range of parameters there and let both tests operate at the same time, which is super, super nifty. And whilst both tests are currently operational, I can still navigate through the app and have a look at other settings and even build a schedule if I wish. All right, next up is how exactly does this device work? Because if you were anything like me as a kid, you pulled everything apart to see what made it tick. And um, I haven't quite shaken that habit yet. And when I see the side of this device here, which I can open up and I see just two pumps for all of those parameters and this huge number of little solenoid pinch valves, it had me super intrigued. Add to the fact that this device can do two tests at once or have two different channels of testing going at the same time, which effectively means it has two complete testers built into this device. I was super, super curious. So uh, I went about stripping it down and having a bit of a look. I can't go too far into the mechanics of it because I don't exactly know how it was built, but I'll take you through what I discovered and how I think it works and we'll go from there. All right, at first thought, this looks like a pretty complicated device, particularly when you open up this side panel here and you see these two pumps and these huge number of pinch valves. But uh, what I soon worked out after watching it in operation is that it's basically two colorometer testers, as far as I can tell anyway, that are housed in this front section here. And in fact, if we pull this little section off, which just has a little uh, connector, this little light indicator just gives you a, a status that it's doing a test. You can actually see here the two different colorometers there. Now these two pumps over here feed each one. So you can see this pump here, brings water in via any one of these inputs here that all pinch open or close to let reagent or water or waste in or out. And then they feed through here to that top colorometer. This one likewise brings water from any one of these inputs, which you can see all connect onto. This input here then goes through to this middle, which then draws into this pump, which can push through to that colorometer. So depending on which one of these is pinched open or close, is depending on which one these pumps are drawing reagent or water from. Super, super nifty and in fact, if you were to try and do all of these with individual pumps, there would be an absolute menagerie of pumps in here. The way they've done this with these low maintenance little solenoid pinch valves and just two pumps is super, super ingenious. Now, if I bring this back across here, I can quickly take a little look at the uh, colorometers here. I don't want to pull it apart too far because uh, this is alone a unit of a pre-production prototype, so I don't want to break things, but uh, they are relatively easy to strip down a little bit here. And uh, this is one of the colorometers. I'll get the camera in nice and close so you can have a real good look at this when the uh, screws are removed from it. All right, now that you can see, this is the line that brings, I'm kind of stretching it as far as I can there, the line that brings the water or reagent in. And then inside here, you have this little clear vial, which is the same as say the uh, vial you would have on a hammer checker per se. There is a little magnet down there, which is controlled. If I can flip it over the other way to show you here, this uh, little fan here has a, a magnet mounted on it. You can just sort of see the magnet through there. So when that fan is powered, it spins the magnet to uh, stir the solution in there. And then you have some sensors in here, which basically look for the color change. I'm pretty sure it's a colorometer sensor here looking for a change. There's no probes or anything like that. And it's quite impressive at how small that vial is there, which means it uses tiny amounts of liquid in both reagents and also salt water from your tank. Super, super impressive.
So now that we know we've got the two colorometers here and we've got the two pumps feeding those colorometers, that's how the device is able to schedule tests at the same time. And I'm assuming they've split them up to avoid contamination. So these tests that run off this pump here, the reagents and things in there, if there is any cross-contamination, I know these pumps can run backwards, so it obviously feeds liquid back through, then closes the pinch valve, then opens up another pinch valve, brings the liquid in into the uh, little colorometer there. But they've obviously split these up. Well, I say obviously, I'm assuming they've split these up to avoid contamination so you don't get uh, reagents reacting with reagents if there is a little bit of a liquid left on one of the uh, lines or something like that post pinch valve. So um, very, very ingenious way of reducing maintenance, reducing complexity and ultimately reducing cost. All right, now we know what it is, what you get in the box, how you set it up, and roughly how this device works. The next thing I want to do is dive into this huge double-sided list of questions that you, the incredible viewer, sent through that you wanted me to cover on this review. So uh, we may as well jump straight into them now. And the first one everyone wants to know, is the Kamoa Reef Master Spa accurate? Now, I've got a two-pronged answer to that, or probably three-pronged actually, because uh, first and foremost, I did not have the iron reagent available to me for the purpose of this testing. So straight off the bat, I cannot say whether the iron is accurate or not. However, I would say in most reef tanks, well, I don't know about everyone out there, but for myself, I'm really only testing iron to see if it has bottomed out. If my refugium has sucked all the iron out of the water column, then I wanna add a bit more. What the actual value is, I'm not as concerned, but um, obviously it would have been nice to see how accurate it was. Now, for the other two prongs to that answer, I can say that uh, phosphate, alkalinity, calcium, magnesium, even nitrite tested very accurately, very repeatably, and also showed the trends in my tank. For instance, my phosphate was getting fairly high up into the 0.3 range. I changed the GFO and both my HANA tester, my Salafet tester, and also the Kamoa Reef Spa showed a trend going down after I changed that GFO, giving me very good confidence that the device was working exactly how you would want. Now, you may recall there was one other parameter there that I didn't mention, and that was nitrate. Unfortunately, with the pre-production unit I got, the nitrate reagent was not very accurate at all. My uh, nitrates were testing around the uh, 15 to 20 mark at the start of the time frame when I got this uh, device. The Reef Master Spa was showing nitrates of like 0.05 or 0.02, which is obviously much, much lower, quite a factor lower than what uh, my tank was actually showing. Now, I did reach out to Kamoa to ask if I had done something wrong, and they did say that they have identified a problem with their nitrate reagent that will be fixed in the production units. And of course, you can calibrate from there, but I wanted to test this with no uh, manual adjustments or anything like that. I wanted to test it as it was delivered out of the box. So for my instance, the nitrate reagent or the nitrate results were not reliable. All of the others I was super pleased with. However, I will just put the stipulation on there that I did test it on a mature reef tank that doesn't fluctuate too much, probably with the exception of uh, the phosphate, which I did let get up quite high. Changed the GFO and did see it come back down, which the machine reported accurately. All of my other parameters remain fairly stable and the Reef Master Spa showed that that stability was absolutely there. All right, the next question that was on the tip of everyone's tongue was the number of tests you get out of a set of reagents. Now, I'm gonna to have to refer to my notes here because I was blown away at the number of tests you get. Now, we'll start off with the interesting one, which is calcium and magnesium, because those two reagents, or those that pair of reagents, actually cover both parameters. So there's an A and a B for calcium and magnesium. And when you do a test, you don't have to pick between calcium and magnesium, you get both of those parameters, which I'm no scientist, I don't exactly know how that works, but I can say from my tests that it was still accurate giving both results from that uh, set of reagents. Now, for those two parameters, you get 148 tests, and that is both of those values for 148 tests. So it's not split into roughly 74 each. You get that many tests for both values, which is super, super cool. Now, things don't slow down much when you go to KH, you still get 117 tests. Now this, I should point out, is approximately, I think it's going to vary a little bit, uh, just 
depending on how much your tank uses and maybe how long the lines are or whatnot like that. But uh, these are my real world figures that uh, the app was showing me. I did notice on some of the specifications that uh, it's possible to get a couple more tests, but uh, in my instance, 148 calcium magnesium, 117 alkalinity tests. Then we move on to nitrite and nitrate, and we're looking at 54 tests there, which is obviously a little bit lower, but with the exception of nitrite, I'm not too bothered about that. In fact, I only tested that a few times in my tank because it was always showing basically zero. Nitrate is one I would like to test a little bit more often along with phosphate, so I'd love to see a few more tests out of that, but it is what it is. Moving on to phosphate, the numbers do come back up and you get 91 tests out of the phosphate reagent, which is pretty damn good, I've got to say. Now, I can't talk about the iron reagent because as touched on before, I didn't get it, but likewise, iron is probably not something you're gonna test multiple times a day. In fact, I would think testing it once a week would be fairly excessive. So all in all, I think you get a huge number of tests out of that set of reagent that is included with the machine. Now, the next logical question following on from the number of tests you get per reagent set is how much does that reagent set cost? Because, uh, you may have noticed this is not a machine where you can pick your own reagents off other brands of test kits and put them into the machine. You use the Kamoa branded or at least the Kamoa uh, supplied reagents with this machine. So you don't necessarily want to be uh, locked into a machine that uses tens of thousands of dollars worth of reagents. It's not going to get used very much at all. Now, this is a little bit of one that was a little bit difficult to answer because uh, I really struggled to actually find the price of the reagents. I did reach out to the Australian distributor who were not able to give me a uh, estimated retail price of the reagents just yet. But from my research, and bear with me, this is preliminary research, but I could find a set of reagents for approximately 175 US dollars, which Sounds like a lot, but you gotta remember the number of parameters you're getting, and then even more importantly, the number of tests you're getting. In fact, when you add up all of the tests you get for that $175 US, it actually works out to be incredibly affordable per test, right on par, if not even better than some of your other HANA tests or Salifer tests out there. And the fact, you know, you don't have to do it yourself, which is an extra bonus. Now, what that means for the Australian market, I can't exactly say just yet, but a uh, rough price uh, calculation there based on the current exchange rates would say that a set of reagents is about $275 Australian. Again, please don't come after me with pitchforks if it comes out to be more or less than that. I've done my best to get a reasonable estimation on that reagent price for you. All right, the next question that people wanna know about is the user interface. And to this, I'll say, it's a pass score or maybe a pass score if you're into golf. Kamoa, I've long loved their hardware. They produce incredible hardware, very, very high quality pumps and other devices. Their software has always been, in my opinion, just good enough. Now, <laughs> the setup process, I gotta say, was incredibly simple. You saw that on screen before. It uh, was very well guided, but uh, as for scheduling tests, um, getting results from tests and just navigating around the interface. I would say it's good enough. I would love to see Kamoa invest a bit more time and energy and probably money into this area. And if they made their interface uh, class leading or at least close to class leading, I don't know if anyone would get near this product. It does what it needs to do. One thing that we'll go over in the cons later that is a huge bugbear of mine with Kamoa, and maybe it's just me, but I don't think it is. I've never in my life been able to get push notifications to my device from the Kamoa app. Now that's way back from dosing pumps when uh, dosing containers get empty. You can set up push notifications and you can tell it when to alert you and all these things. The Kamoa app has never in its life sent me a push notification. And unfortunately that remains true with the app here. When you do tests and you get results, whether they be within your set boundaries or outside of your set boundaries, you don't get a push notification. You gotta open the app and go have a look at the results. It's honestly not the end of the world, and I do feel like I'm complaining about our first world problems, but you guys asked what the interface is like, and it's easy to set up, easy enough to navigate around, a little bit uh, non-user intuitive at times, mostly pretty good, but the push notifications is a real disappointment. All right, now another question you guys wanted to cover was Wi-Fi stability of this device, and uh, in the world of uh, 
just, well, I was gonna say in reefing automations, but just in uh, general life at the moment where literally every device out there has some connection to the internet, how stable, how reliable, and uh, how difficult it is to set that up become huge problems for a lot of products out there. Now, Kamoa have not been immune to this in the past. However, one word of advice I can give people using mostly reef devices, these do connect to 2.4 gigahertz networks, which if you've got a uh, sort of uh, internet provider supplied uh, modem router and you're broadcasting 2.4 gigahertz and five gigahertz networks on the same SSID, which is the name of your network, your device may have trouble connecting because your router is gonna try and push five gigahertz to it and it's not gonna to wanna to connect to that and you'll get all these sort of issues. If you can set up a quality either dedicated 2.4 gigahertz networks, just, I was gonna say just for your reef tank, but for any other sort of device in your home that has to connect to 2.4 gigahertz, that is gonna give you a huge leg up in this space and save you a whole heap of headaches because uh, I can say in my home where I've got an awful lot of Wi-Fi and network connected gadgets, I used to have trouble not just with Kamoa but with other products in general connecting to my network. Once I went to a uh, much more serious network, in fact, a commercial spec network, thanks to uh, some of my reefing buddies out there that helped me set that up. I have had zero network connectivities, not just with Kamoa, but with other brands as well. But back onto topic with the uh, Reef Master Spa, since I've set that up, I have not had one dropout and it has been four weeks now. So got to give that a big thumbs up in my book, but with a caveat of you've got to have a good isolated 2.4 gigahertz network. All right, on to the next question, which does become a huge decision point when it comes to reef automated testers out there, and that is what maintenance is required on the machine. How easy is it to do? How often do you have to do it? And things like that. Now, I can say the Reef Master Spa, because it just has those two pumps, and they are very good quality Kamoa pumps, the maintenance and servicing on this device looks dead simple. You don't need to fill up vials and load them into the machine, which is, I guess, a bit of the flip side of having to have all of those reagents externally, but uh, basically those two pumps have a, uh, a tube lifespan on them of a thousand hours. I've been running this device, putting it through a lot of tests over four weeks now, and I've gone through 24 hours of uh, lifespan on those tubes. Now, I can also say, knowing that I've ran a bunch of Kamoa products in the past, that that 1,000 hours is very, very conservative. You can push that tube much further than that, but at the... Uh, Simplicity of replacing those uh, tubes, the price of replacing those tubes, it seems like a no-brainer to do it at the 1,000 hour mark. Anyway, now, the rest of the device, things get a little bit more tricky because I've never worked with these little pinch solenoid valves before, and uh, if we open this bad boy up, you can see it is absolutely littered with them in there. So uh, what the uh, service lifespan maintenance on those is, I cannot exactly say. I'm under the impression that they are basically maintenance free, but uh, it's gonna be one of those things that you're just gonna have to try after a year or two. They do look to be a pretty simple device, I guess. At worst, you might be replacing the tube that goes through them because I guess if you're squashing the tube and opening the tube, squashing the tube, opening the tube, at some point in time, that's gonna deteriorate away and you're gonna replace those tubes. But uh, thankfully, it's all the same Kamoa tubing in there. If you get a roll of that, you should be able to follow the in point and out point of each one and replace them fairly easily. As for inside the chamber itself, we had a look when we were doing the uh, how this device works. I'm not sure what sort of maintenance one's gonna be able to do in there and uh, how difficult it is to do, but it does effectively look like two Hannah checkers built into a machine with uh, some pumps and smarts onto it to fill and empty those uh, vials for you. So I'm hoping that it's fairly maintenance free. I am super curious by the fact that uh, it does have a connector on the back here for a cleaning solution. No mention of that in the manual, or at least in the manual at the time of producing this video, and uh, no cleaning solution provided, but I am assuming at some stage, you can hook up a cleaning solution and give the machine a bit of a birthday. But uh, by the fact that that's done through the back of the machine, it should be super simple to do. So all in all, for the complexity of this machine and the number of parameters it tests, I would have to say that the maintenance scores very, very well. It looks to be a dead simple machine to maintain. All right, the next thing you guys wanted to know was the integration ability, if that's a word. <laughs> We're gonna roll with that, but basically how easy it is to have this tester not only monitor your parameters, but potentially also control your parameters. Now, 
Now this is an interesting one. I didn't test it out because uh, when I had a look at the manual and I'll put it on screen for you now, there does appear to be a couple of different ways you can do this. Now there is a device, let me have a look, called the Kamoa E1, which connects onto the CAN bus at the back of this machine, which will basically directly control some pumps like uh, your calcium reactor feed pump. And that looks to be the sort of way you would want to go. However, I've got to say, until I build even more confidence in these machines, I'm still a big advocate of using them for uh, monitoring your parameters and then informing you to then make an informed decision on changing setup of your reef tank. But uh, should you want to, you can hook it up through that E1 device, which basically connects between your Kamoa Reef Master Spa and your Kamoa FX STP calcium reactor pump to slow it down or speed it up as needed. That does appear to be possible, but I will say it didn't look to be overly user intuitive. That could be just me. I do encourage if you are interested in doing that or if that is a, uh, a decision point for you in buying this machine, their instructions are available online and I can even put the uh, link to some of those in the description below for you. Read that section of the manual, see if it makes sense to you and if it does and you feel like you know what you're doing and that's something that you must have before buying this machine, use that to determine the decision for you. To me, it looked a little uh, explorative, so um, I didn't want to risk hooking it up to my machine when I just really wanted to see the results it gave me for a while before building the confidence to then let it grab the wheel and take over my dream roof tank. But um, in short, the connectivity is there. I still think it's a little bit experimental. All right, the next question that a lot of you wanted to cover, and this has come about from some of the other automated testers on the market, is the interval between tests and how often you have to test. So on some machines out there, you can set a little bit of a schedule, but you must test some parameters so many times a day or so many hours apart. I am super, super pleased to say that with the Kamoa Reefmaster Spa, you can schedule your tests as far apart as you like and almost as close together as you like. Each test does take about 40 minutes to do. And uh, depending on whether that you're on one channel or two channel, as we touched on before, this machine effectively has two testers in one. You can stack those tests. So if you're doing a calcium and magnesium test, you can do a phosphate test at the same time. So effectively you get three parameters testing all at once. Those tests do take about 40 minutes each. So if you wanted to do a uh, calcium magnesium test and then an hour later do another calcium magnesium test, that's about as close as you can get. Now you can manually fire it off as soon as that has finished if you want. But if you do want to put that in the schedule, that you will get a notification if it's too close. And I think from memory, it was about two hours it was as close as I could schedule tests together. However, if you're wanting to test things that frequently, the only thing that really comes to mind would be something like alkalinity, particularly if you are using it to control your calcium reactor, you might want to test alkalinity every two hours or even less. But um, realistically, if you're testing things like calcium, magnesium, uh, nitrate, phosphate, you probably don't want to do a test every two hours or well shorter than that. So. I actually think the uh, time frame between tests, both at the minimum end and the maximum end is incredible. So things like uh, iron, when that reagent does come out, I'd probably want to test maybe once a week and I'd want to make it the same time every week. Maybe a Wednesday morning test iron, let me know the results. There's no need to test so many times a day or so many times a week. You can spread that very generous reagent out as far as you like, which does play a massive part in your decision for a automated reef tester. And I'm happy to say the Kamoa Reef Master Spa does that with 10 out of 10 score. All right, the next thing you guys wanted to know is how noisy or what is the volume of this device? And I gotta say, I was blown away with just how silent it is. There are only two pumps in this machine. They run very, very slowly. The only thing you'll really hear is when those solenoids open and close, you get a tiny little click. Click, and if you're like me, you're on the Philips Coral Care lights that do click all day anyway because they actually have no fans in there. So the aluminium on the, uh, on the cast aluminium frame of those lights expands and contracts as the lights warm up and cool down. So I occasionally get random clicks coming from my tank anyway. And uh, I'm happy to say the Reefmaster Spa Inside a cabinet, you could barely hear those clicks unless you were basically right next to that tank and you scheduled a manual test. 
Then you could hear the click when the solenoid opens, but other than that, you won't hear a thing out of this machine. There is also a stir bar for each one of those two channels or each one of those vials in the machine. And that does have a little fan that spins on it. I must admit, I did not even know that existed until I pulled apart the machine to have a look. And I did have a look in the settings and there is actually the ability to change the speed of that spinning. Should that become noisy, you can slow it down or if you want to, I don't know, you want to really get a whirlpool going on in your test, you can speed it up. But the default setting was completely silent. So uh, as far as audible levels go, this machine very, very quiet and class leading. All right, chipping through the questions. The next one you guys wanted to talk about was reagent expiry dates. There's no use having a, a 300 tests of a parameter that's gonna last you a year or two years if the reagents expire after one week. Now I'm happy to say that the expiry date on the reagents that I got with this machine have a 12 month expiry. So um, I think that's pretty generous. In fact, I think I would probably schedule most of my tests around getting maybe somewhere between six months to 12 months of use out of those reagents. Anyway, I know when you first get a machine like this, you're going to want to test these parameters multiple times a day. But in reality, once things steady down a little bit, you're probably unlikely to test magnesium four or five times a day and maybe uh, maybe once every few days. And if you do that, you're going to get close to 12 months out of the reagents. Now, if you get a 12 month expiry, that makes sense to me to schedule them around that time frame. And I think that's more than generous. However, I can imagine a scenario where uh, you got a reagent set that uh, was manufactured a little while ago and the reagents are down to say three months expiry left. That'd be something you'd want to check out when buying replacement reagents. Make sure you get fresh ones and get that full 12 months so you can really spread those tests out. But uh, 12 month expiry on a set of reagents seems like good value to me. All right, the next thing you guys wanted to talk about was the length of hose out the back. Is that something that has to remain at a precise predetermined length or can you shorten it or extend it if need be? Now that is particularly important on a machine like the Kamoa Reefmaster Spa, where to be fair, you've got an absolute uh, family reunion of octopus with their legs hanging out the back. There's all sorts of lines coming out of the back of this machine and you've got to try and make that as neat as possible. So depending on where you mount the machine or where your reagents sit, that's super, super important. Now, I will say this with a grain of, uh, a grain of salt because, um, I'm going to say that it does not matter how long or short these lines are because there's no mention in the manual of not trimming these lines down at all as far as I could see. They may have updated it and if it has updated, please let me know in the comments below. But uh, based on the way the machine works and we saw when it was filling those lines initially, it's self-aware of when the reagent and when the liquids are coming through those lines and into the machine, which makes me feel that it won't matter how long or short those lines are, which is a huge plus because um, yeah, like I touched on, there are an absolute abundance of tubes coming out of the back of this machine. And if you can shorten them or lengthen them, but if you can shorten them, someone clever out there will make a nice little mount or box that holds all the reagents, has all those lines neatly tucked in there and makes this all in one unit that you can't even see that uh, spaghetti out the back. And if you can do that, happy days. So um, like I said, with a grain of salt, I'm going to say that no, it does not matter how long or short these lines are. Now, the next question you guys wanted to ask was, does this machine require access to RODI for cleaning of the uh, vials and whatnot in the machine? Now, as you saw in the setup, it does not require access to RODI, but it does have provision for a cleaning fluid, which um, to be fair, I don't actually know the uh, intended use case or timelines for that, but I'm gonna guess it's something you do maybe every six or 12 months, run a cleaning solution through the machine just to give it a birthday and ensure that your results are as accurate as possible. But one other thing to consider is, as it does actually have two sort of test compartments in the machine, you do have two salt water inlines and two waste water outlines. So please do factor that in when you're looking at where you're gonna mount this unit. All right, second last question, and that is, what are the lines like? Are they thin? Are they prone to blocking? And does it have a pre-filter? Now, I can say that the lines for both the reagents, the wastewater and the salt water are super, super thin. And um, to me, it looks like they would be prone to blockage. However, I did not experience any blockages whatsoever. Now, I did not fit a pre-filter to the salt water inlines only because in the instructions and also there's none supplied it in the box, it does not say to fit one in. Now, I would probably say that it wouldn't be a bad idea to put a filter on that line just so you don't pull up a, you know, a 
big crud chunk of uh, detritus, clog the line in, and then you get some crazy results, particularly if you are setting it up to automatically control your tank from there. So a pre-filter might not be a bad idea, but I can say in my four weeks of use case, I didn't have any pre-filter. The lines are super, super thin. I didn't have any blockages whatsoever. The advantage of the thin lines is that the liquid does get through them very, very quickly from both your reagents to your salt water in and your uh, salt water or your wastewater out, I should say. So no blockages in my experience, but I can foresee that uh, being that thin of a line in, there's a potential for that to happen if you're drawing water from a particularly turbulent area in your sump. All right, we're up to the final question. Thank you so much for this huge array of questions that you guys sent through, and that is the price of this machine. Arguably the most important question of all now. Again, please don't shoot the messenger. I don't have final, final pricing yet because this was a pre-production unit, but I am under the impression that this machine is gonna retail for about two and a half thousand Australian dollars, which by my notes here equates to about 1600 US dollars. Now, please do bear in mind there could be a little bit of variance there, but uh, based off that, it's on par with all of our other smart testers that we're seeing on the market. And this does have the ability to test as many if not more parameters than other units out there. And from what I can tell apart from the uh, nitrate and the lack of chance to test iron, it does it very, very consistently, does it with minimal maintenance and in my opinion at least, the reagent price is super, super affordable for the number of tests you get and the frequency of tests you have to do. So I'm gonna say at a price wise, I think it's very, very well priced. Whether it's in your budget for your reef tank, I can't answer for you guys out there, but if you are in the market for a smart tester, that's the sort of budget you're gonna be working with. And I think at that price, it's definitely gonna get a good market share. All right, guys, that is all of your questions. We'll wrap things up with my pros and cons, and then I'll leave you with it. We might start off with the cons because as you know on this channel, I always like to finish on a high. So our first con or downside, if you will, for this machine is the fact that the reagents are mounted externally to the machine itself. So you have this huge spaghetti of tubes coming out of the back of the machine. That may not bother you at all from a... Uh uh, aesthetics and OCD kind of angle, it did frustrate me, it frustrate me a little bit having to try and tidy these tubes out of the back, but um, it wasn't a huge deal, but if you are really invested in the aesthetics of things, you wanna look into a solution of that before you just go and have seven bottles of reagent hanging out of the back of a reasonable size machine. All right, my next con flows on from that uh, spaghetti of tubes coming out of the back, and that is the, the uh, sort of lack of mounting options for this unit that exists. It basically has no mounting hooks or anything like that. You're gonna need a nice, reasonable sized flat surface, ideally above your water source level to sit this unit on and then find somewhere suitable to sit all of these reagent bottles. So. Like I said, I think that could be addressed with a third party or even a first party if Kamoa wanted to get into it. Some little box or case that held all of your reagents and gave you some nice little mounting hooks to sit this unit up in a spot nice and tidy would be a big game changer, I think, in just the aesthetics of the unit itself. Now the next con is one that is, I wouldn't say it's a deal breaker for me, but it's something that frustrates me to no end and hopefully, hopefully something Kamoa can fix in the short term future. And that is the lack of push notifications. Despite all of the configuration and setup and uh, all of the security things I do to enable push notifications from this app, I just cannot receive push notifications. And it would be super, super convenient, particularly whether you're using this as a monitor or even if you are using it to control your tank, to get a notification when one of those tested parameters falls above or below your set range. That to me is the value of a machine like this. You want it to just go about and do its business and just let you know when things aren't right. You can still absolutely do that. You just have to get into a bit of a routine of opening that app each day or every few days and just see how things are going. Or of course, just walking past and having a look at the great, very bright and colorful screen on the front of the unit, but um, push notifications. Come on, Kamala, let's get that working. And then last but not least by any stretch of the imagination in my cons was my nitrate results. Now, hopefully by the time all of you get your hands on the Kamoa Reefmaster Spa, you'll have the brand new nitrate reagent and it will make all of those problems go away. But all I can do is report on my testing. And whilst I'm super impressed with the results and the accuracy from all of the other parameters, my nitrate was basically unusable. Kept telling me my nitrate was almost zero when I know for a fact it was closer to 
number 20. So um, it's a decent sized con, but again, hopefully one they have addressed with that new updated reagent. All right, on to the good news, and that is my list of pros, and thankfully there are heaps of very, very good pros here. Starting off with the ease of setup, I've got to say, I've set up a bunch of auto testers over the last few years, and I've never come across one this easy, particularly one that does this many parameters. Whilst I was skeptical of having the reagents outside of the unit, um, and also having to use the Kamoa branded reagents, the fact that the machine knew what it was, knew where it was connected, literally get those supplies caps with the hoses, the labeled hoses for both the reagent and, and the machine end, hook all them up, which granted there are quite a lot, but hook them all up, open up the app, add it in, found it straight away, said it's got to fill the tubes, it knows when they're full, just goes and does its thing, and then instantly you're ready to test. This machine was up and running in minutes, and all of those parameters are ready to go straight off the bat, which I've got to say, you're not going to find anything easier than that, definitely not quicker than that in the space at the moment for reef automated testers. Now my next pro was the fact that this machine basically has two testers in it. The fact that you can run concurrent tests, like I touched on before the use case where you can test your calcium and magnesium, you get those results, both of those parameters at the same time anyway, but then on the other tester, you can kick off a nitrate or a phosphate test at the same time. Super, super convenient. Probably not that big of a deal when you schedule your tests in, but, um, if you just want to see where your values are at right now, switch it over to manual mode, jump in, hit the test for that one, hit the test on the other channel for that one, and within 40 or so minutes, you're going to get those results for all of those parameters, which I found super cool. I do know sometimes when you've got a lot of parameters loaded into a machine and you want to get the results of all of them and you have to do those tests sequentially one after the other, it takes a bit of time. So I guess for the fact that I thought I was getting one tester and I kind of got two in one, was a big surprise and a definite pro in my book. Now the next pro is one that I'm taking a little bit of a leap of faith on, but I am gonna say, despite only having this unit for four weeks, that I think from what I can tell, maintenance is gonna be an absolute breeze. The fact there's only two pumps, they're super accessible, they're high quality Kamoa pumps, you get to them right on the side, you can replace that tube. The app maintains the number of hours of life on those tubes for you, and I hope Fingers crossed those solenoid valves are gonna require next to no maintenance in the long run. This machine should be dead, dead simple. Add to the fact that you do get their own brand of reagents and you just hook them in, you can scan the QR code on those and you're off and running. I really couldn't ask for much more on a maintenance wise side of things. So I think the maintenance is gonna be a huge pro of this machine, but like I said, I am taking a little bit of a leap of faith there because without testing the unit for a year or two, you can't really say how easy that maintenance is. But from all reports, it looks like it's gonna be an absolute beauty to maintain and run. All right, the next pro, which is basically the flip side of the con we talked about before, apart from nitrate, each and every other one of my elements, apart from iron, of course, as well. So I guess nitrate was no good, iron, I don't know. Every other one of the parameters was very accurate, very repeatable, and did show trends like I mentioned when I changed my GFO. It was trending upwards, I changed the GFO, phosphate trended downwards. Cannot ask for much more than that. And the results were very comparable to both my HANA testers and also my Salifat testers. And with that in mind, I cannot ask for much more there. I think the machine is on the right track and is definitely reliable enough to trust the results you get. Now, the next pro that I want to talk about is something that we don't really consider so much when comparing and looking at purchasing a automated tester. However, once you actually have one installed, you got your hands on it and it's running, it's something that you wish you considered a little bit more. And that is the flexibility of the schedule for testing. Now, this device, as far as I'm concerned, is almost industry leading in that space where if I want to, I can spread my tests out as far as I like, making those reagents super, super affordable. I'm not forced into a schedule of testing parameters every four hours to keep the machine wet or whatever reason they give you. You can spread these out as far as you like, I guess within the 12 month expiry of that reagent. We all test at different schedules, different times. Sometimes if something's happening in your tank, you might wanna test parameters every few hours. Other times when things are good, you might wanna spread it out to once a week. You can do that with the Kamoa Reefmaster Spa. And like I said, it's something that I hope all other brands can consider when developing because as far as I'm concerned, this is industry leading. 
All right, the second last pro, and then I'll move on to the most important one, but the second last one is the noise. As I touched on before, this device is near silent. It's not a big deal for some people that have this in a uh, fish room basement, but for other people that have it mounted next to their tank in their living room, a noisy machine whirring away is no fun at all. The Kamoa Reefmaster Spa, near silent, with the exception of a couple little clicks when those solenoids open and close, which uh, just sounds like someone's cracked their jaw, is a beauty to see, well, I was gonna say a beauty to hear, but you're not gonna hear it anyway, but it's a absolute pro in my book, which then does lead on to our final pro. And I'm gonna say it's a pro, everyone's gonna have a different opinion on this, but I'm gonna say the price of the machine at two and a half thousand dollars Australian is very, very competitive amongst the other automated testers out there. Consider the number of tests you get for that, consider the price of reagents, consider the schedule of tests you have to do, and obviously consider the number of parameters that it covers. And I think you'll see that the Kamoa Reef Master Spa is very, very competitive in that space. And uh, for that reason, I give it a big pro in my books. All right, guys, there you have it. That was my review of the Kamoa Reef Master Spa, the latest device in the very hotly contested market of automated reef testers out there. And I've got to say, what a beauty of a machine it is. Heaps of pros, very few cons, and very exciting to see where this device is headed. Now, I have had confirmation the Australian distributor has reached out to say that within the next week or two, they will have confirmed pricing on both the unit as well as the replacement reagents and will also have a release date for us very soon so you can rest assured that as soon as that information is available I will give an update here on this channel so you guys are kept as up to date as possible now that does pose an opportunity that if you have any further questions I get to hang on to this machine for a few more weeks so if there's anything else you want to see feel free to pop those questions in the comment section down below I do personally personally reply to each and every one of them there and now we've got communication channels open with the Australian distributor there shouldn't be anything I cannot find an answer for so feel free to pop those questions down there now the Australian distributor did also want me to point out that when these units are available if you are purchasing from an Australian retailer which let's be honest we're all going to you will get a full 12 month warranty on it which is handled here in Australia so on a device like this where things can be complicated and it is a first release to the market a good 12 month warranty seems like a good idea to me. So if you are purchasing one of these in the near future, be sure to pick it up from your local fish shop. Other than that, guys, I do just want to give a huge shout out to the huge number of channel subscribers. We are edging our way towards 30,000, which absolutely warms my heart. It takes two seconds of your time, takes absolutely no money whatsoever. There is a button in the bottom corner down there which you can press, which will ensure you don't miss out on any future videos, including the update on the uh, pricing and timeline of this device. I do also wanna take the opportunity to give an extra, extra special shout out to my channel members. You'll see their names on screen up here. These guys do chip in a couple of bucks each month to make these videos possible and to ensure they can remain completely unbiased, honest and truthful, which is absolutely the purpose of Parker's Reef. So a big shout out to these guys for making these videos possible. Other than that, guys, I will wrap things up. Thank you so much for watching. Till next time, stay safe, keep reefing.